Phil Masterson Trophy. You're the nominee for the Devils. First off, what does that mean for you to be nominated by the writers for that? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it means a lot. Uh, I think, honestly, I think this is the third time I've been nominated on my respective teams. Um, but I, I do take a lot of pride in it. Uh, you know, my career hasn't always been that straight line trajectory, but I think just credits myself just kind of sticking with the plan, fighting for every day in the NHL. Um, and it speaks a lot to the culture here, the guys being surrounded with people helping me to succeed and put me in that spot. So, yeah, it does mean a lot. And just how would you describe your own leadership style and your own way that you like to contribute in this locker room away from the stuff on the ice? Yeah, I, I think it's no secret. I'm kind of the happy-go-lucky guy off the ice. Um, I like to keep things loose uh, and just kind of let my play do the talking. Uh, I'm going to want to do really whatever it takes to win. Um, mainly it's kind of that gritty stuff, kind of, you know, that foot, foot soldier mentality. But, uh, again, I think that stuff speaks volumes. Uh, whatever I'm called upon to do, I'm going to do it. Just for you, um, joining this team last year, doing what you're doing this year, what did it mean? This could sound really terrible. Like, what did it mean to you Like, when the trade deadline, when we talked, right, and you said that you're someone who's moved a lot at that time, but the belief that they have in you, that you are a part of what this culture is here. Do they were there no suitors? We don't know. Um, <laughs> no, it, I'm, so, I'm so mean to me. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I, I like give you a hard time. No, it, in, all, in all honesty, um, I, but it means something to you. Absolutely, I, I feel at home here. I feel part of the plan. I, I know. Said there's another year of my deal and whatnot, but I just try and live, compete each and every day, make myself better, make my teammates better, and you know, working towards a goal here. It might not happen, you know, here or there or whatnot, but in the long run, what can you do to kind of push your teammates, get the most out of yourself in your career? Because you know, think. Things go by fast. I mean, I'm, I'm no spring chicken anymore. So it means a lot whenever you have that, uh, I guess, confidence from an organization and investing in you. When you just look at this next stretch, six final games in the regular season, five of them are against potential playoff teams. So it's going to be a difficult slate, but this team has been improving its play as well. What are the keys to making sure that you guys are showing up in these games and also still fighting for those points? Yeah, just continue to focus on the process. I think that's what we've really tried to dial in. I don't, not looking at that end result, um, but also what can we do to, to better ourselves? Um, I think we focused on being engaged, you say, the, the three words, physically, mentally, emotionally, going into games, um, playing solid 60 minutes. You can see when we're on, uh, we're a hard team to beat. Have we had you know, lulls here and there within games? Yeah, so continue just to, to better ourselves, work on the areas that we want to be known for in our culture and you know, our strength of our hockey team veteran moves there from you and VZ to get the punches in first, make sure you stayed in the game on uh, Wednesday night? Honestly, I, I knew the rule, but you're kind of in that moment uh, once we kind of caught wind of what's happening. I I know Jimmy, he's my teammate in, in Buffalo. We kind of looked at each other and said, all right, here we go. Uh, I'm not a square off guy. I think you guys could tell. I don't think he was either. So we kind of got out of it. But it, I think the funny part with that is we were done and we looked up and everyone was just getting started. So. Um, what a melee, I mean, people can make it what it is. Uh, credit to our guys for standing in there. Um, you know, we, we talk about team camaraderie. Can't let Dermy have all the fun. I think it just speaks volume for us just knowing that, you know, he's going to risk it and put it on the line for us, for a team. There's no reason why other guys can't as well. So, um, cool way to start the game. It's definitely a memory that we're going to carry with us forever. Yeah, can you expand it? Oh, yeah, I was, I was going to expand on the to go that way. Yes and no. I mean, so much is made about, you know, you can't, I guess, orchestrate these trades or having them pre-arranged uh it, it wasn't at all um yeah. the anthem finished i think i think everyone understood the two guys that were going to go um after the anthem there was a couple words exchanged and then you're like all right things might pick up here a little bit i again i was fortunate to, to line up beside a, a friend of mine and as part of the game i mean why not so again we, we i guess we got the jump out there but i mean that's that's just two fierce teams rivals going at it i mean that, that's old school hockey Jonas, this final stretch of the regular season, there are six games, five of them against potential playoff teams. It's important to win these games, but how can you all make sure that you're you're finishing up this regular season with a strong note? Uh, I think it's all mindset. Uh, you know, just going into games. Uh, I would, you know, we take it game by game. Uh, you know, we don't uh, look too far uh, ahead of us. Uh, you know, take it game by game and. Uh, you know, just to try to uh, win the games, um, you know, period for period. And, um, yeah, I think that's the best way you can, you know, go into a game. Your first two games back, how comfortable do you feel with everything coming back into it? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's getting there. Um, you know, uh, it's, I missed some time, but uh, I think, uh, you know, I was still skating and everything. And uh, obviously get, playing the game is uh, a little different than uh, practicing. But, uh, you know, I think overall uh, I was fine. Um, 
there's probably stuff to improve for sure, uh, but uh, you know, I think I would say overall it's it's good. Your teammate Curtis Lazard was nominated to be the Bill Masterson Trophy nominee from the Devils. What can you say about who he is in the locker room? What type of leadership he brings, and just his impact on this team? Yeah, he's uh, you know he's a guy with a lot of energy uh, on and off the ice. Uh, he's uh, you know he's, he's easy to talk to, and uh, you know he's just just a friendly, nice guy, and uh, you know he brings a lot to the team, and um, you know we really appreciate him here and. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice to have him around. This final stretch of the regular season, six games, five against potential playoff teams. So it's going to be very competitive. What are some of the detailed areas that you've seen improved with this team that can be carried into this last slate of games? Yeah, I think we got uh, better structurally, uh, defensively and offensively, and uh, just couldn't close a couple of games. We were up and uh, didn't manage, manage the lead well. So that's the one area we, we need to be focused on right now. And, We've been playing good, but uh, the details of finishing games and uh, when when we up and take care of the puck and little little details, that's what we need to focus on right now. Even just not looking at potential playoff picture, but it's important to win these games down the stretch. How can that show the culture and the development of this group through the entire season by finishing out the season strong? Oh yeah, we we're not gonna fall. That's not gonna happen, even if we don't have a chance. So we need to f play every every game 100% and be ready and. Uh, didn't give it our our skins so, so too easy. So uh, just focus on us and play our game and be good. Curtis Lazar was nominated to be the Bill Masterson Trophy nominee from the Devils. What would you say about his leadership in the locker room? What type of guy he is and what he brings to this group? Yeah, he's a great guy. He's a funny guy. I played with him in Boston too. So uh, it's, it's been great to play with him and uh, be around him. And it's uh, you always want to have guys like it in, in the locker room. So. It's good for him. How can he help lift this group up? How has he lifted this group up this year with his personality and his happiness? Oh yeah, for sure. Like he's smiling a lot always and brings the brings the energy every every game and every practice. And he's the he's the guy who uh, give us that energy for sure. Hey, um, you've had your best stretch of play here over the last month or so. Is it as simple as just being healthy? I think so. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't easy to uh, basically. Try to get into a moving train in yeah. the middle of the season. It wasn't easy, but uh, yeah, now feeling much better, playing better, and uh, just trying to stay healthy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know lines have been moving around a little bit lately, but there was a stretch there where you, Palat, and Mercer were having a lot of success together. What do you think it was about like that combination that's that seemed to work? Yeah, me and Pauli and uh, Mercer, we were clicking, I think, and we were playing good games and uh, scored a couple of goals, and uh, I think it was just a good chemistry, and we read off each other, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, it's fun to play with those two guys. Curtis Lazar is the Bill Masterson yeah. nominee from the Devils. What can you describe about his leadership, who he is, and how he has helped this group this season? Well, he's a good character guy. Uh, been around the league now for a little while. He, he looks young, but he's, he's uh, been in the league a while. I think, you know, what people sometimes don't understand is the players go through a lot, uh, you know, on the ice, off the ice, within their family, and, uh, you know, Laser persevered through some tough things last year a little bit with his family and being away and his wife being pregnant, and that's not always easy, and he's been a, a constant pro through it all, and uh, it's, it's a good nomination uh, by you guys. Just looking at this final stretch of games, five of the next six games could be against potential playoff teams. Yeah. So how do you keep building on the things that have improved and also finish this season on a really strong note? Yeah, I, I think from, you know, since I've taken over from day one, we've talked about, you know, what we want to be as a team and how we want to play and uh, winning, having a winning mindset. And, uh, you know, a lot goes into being an everyday player and a team that wins consistently. And we haven't done that enough this season. And, uh, you know, our focus will be on Ottawa tomorrow night. And uh, that's not going to change. Trav, um, Johnny not on the ice today. No. Do you have an update? On uh, he'll travel with the team, and we'll see where he's at tomorrow. Uh, with Curtis, I mean, it, it, it seems it, like he kind of got in this locker room and almost immediately, like, made his, his voice known. I mean, is, does it, is that kind of your assessment of it, too? I know you weren't here last year, but if you think about it, I mean, he is here, and he's already, you know, a pretty well-established team leader. Yeah, I find that guys like Curtis, uh, you know, that drop the gloves and been in the league a little while. They've. Uh, are you talking laser or? Yeah, uh, Lazar. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, For the two, I guess. 
Well, yeah, he's been a presence in our room too. So, uh, but yeah, Laser's a popular guy in the room. Uh, you know, a he works. Uh, he comes to the rink every day with a positive atti attitude. Uh, he does things that, you know, a lot of players don't like doing. And uh, you know, he's found a way to be a high draft pick, from being a high high end, I guess, goal scoring guy, uh, and turned his career into. A, one where he's now a bottom six guy and a, and a character guy in the room and does a lot of the things that go unnoticed that, you, you know, you really need to win. And, uh, you know, you can't have enough of those guys around because they, they help your team uh, get over the line a lot of nights. Um, when, when you were hired here, what, what, how enticing was it, was it the prospect of coaching a guy like Timo? Um, and what have you seen from, from being able to... I, when I first came to New Jersey, it was uh, obviously Timo is one of them. There's a lot of great young talent on the team, and uh, I think the future in New Jersey is extremely bright. Uh, but when you talk about Timo, I'd seen him uh, in the West uh, quite a bit. Uh, and you talk about winning, you know, when it counts and when it matters and playoff hockey, everyone knows how hard playoff hockey is, and um, it's not always the most skilled players that win. At that time of the year, and he's he's you know got a combination of skill, size, power, uh, and when he plays that way, uh, he, he's hard to handle. And I think I'm happy for him now. I think we're seeing now like the player that he can be. And uh, when he has when he's skating the way he is, and he's moving his feet, going to the net, uh, you know, finishing checks, he's. Uh, He's a player that you can win with. Yeah, obviously probably shouldn't read too much into line combinations at a practice, but yeah. there were a lot of different change-ups to the forward lines. Is it more about just trying to get a couple more lines going if you're, if you're moving guys around here? Yeah, I, I mean, I, when you say there's a lot, we've kind of flipped some of our wingers around yeah. on each line. Um, I've been looking for different guys to you know, step up their play in certain scenarios. Sometimes it's a matchup that you're looking for, but... Uh, you know, I just felt we've lost a few in a row. Try to get a, uh, a different look. I thought Merce's game the other night took a took a step in the right direction. I liked liked a lot of things that he did the other night after the fight uh, when he came back. He played played a strong game. I thought Holtzy played a strong game himself. And um, you know, I just thought we'd try a different look today. I'm not committed to doing it either tomorrow. I might go back. I really like Nico's line, but uh, also would like to see some scoring towards some other line. Um, obviously, you know, Wednesday was a little bit different with 14 guys playing the whole game and four yeah. defensemen. But if you look back over the last three games, is there anything in particular you've seen in the in the third period that you, you think has led to the, the third period outcome? Well, I think the other – each game for me has been a little bit different. Um, you know, the Buffalo game, you know, they get a, they get a goal. It's, uh, that game for me in the third was a lot different. And, and they, were, they were playing well. That was a hard-fought game the whole night. Uh, the Pittsburgh game – on paper, it looks like it was a total collapse. Uh, where really, when you go back and watch it, you know I think they had five or six shots, five on five, and it just the puck found its way into the net. Uh, and yet we played an unbelievable first two periods that you, you couldn't have scripted any better. And yet when you have a period like that where the puck just goes in uh, four times minus the empty netter, it, it feels a lot worse than it is. And, and I think that's part of coaching is being honest with your group about it, where we could have been better in those areas where we could have stepped up and got momentum back. And the Ranger game was a hard game. It was an emotional game. Um, you know, I thought their crowd was, their team was feeding off the energy in the first period, had us on our heels a little bit. But I loved how we came back uh, in the second period, took the lead, and then, you know, we're, we're in the offensive zone where their team's tired and we're getting ready to make an offensive play. And unfortunately, we break a stick and they score. And, uh, it was it was a hard fought game the whole way, and, and you know so I think it's it's not dwelling on hey this is a problem because that happened. I think as a coach you got to really look at each scenario and say okay are we nervous are we? I don't think that's been the case in in really any of the games.